Hello, my name is Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Vehicle Aerodynamics, Testing, Modification and Development. And the book is aimed at those developing their road cars, amateur racing cars or alternative transport. What I want to do in today's video is talk about measuring aerodynamic lift or downforce through measuring trailing vortex rotation. Gosh, doesn't that sound uh, rather obscure? Let's take a look. It's quite a fascinating technique, which is applicable to certain types of cars. So the first thing to take on board is if you have a fastback shaped car with a sloping rear trunk, or you have a modern notchback car, so a three box vehicle, but again, one with a very sloping rear window, those car shapes develop a pair of trailing vortices, swirls of flow coming off the back corners of the car. Now, this diagram shows a very stylized version of them. They're much, much more complex than uh, this diagram shows, but at least it gives you a bit of a feel for it. So have a look here. You can see the airflow comes here, wraps around that fastback shape, joins the airflow that's coming up from under the car and has a big rotating swirl. Now have a look at how the rotating swirl on the right hand side of the car when it's viewed from behind is going anti-clockwise, going around that way. Conversely, if we follow the air on the other side of the car, the left hand side of the car when viewed from the rear, we can see it's flowing the other way. It's flowing clockwise. So we have these vortices coming off the back of the car in this case like that. Now, a reminder, I said fastback and notchback, modern notchback cars only. Square backs with a vertical rear do not have this type of airflow behind them. Uh, open wheeled race cars, they've got all sorts of other things happening. We're talking only about uh, fastback and modern notchback cars, three box cars with sloping rears. I wouldn't want you to try and apply these techniques to shapes that don't even have these sort of trailing vortices because that won't work. All right, big swirlies coming off the back of the car. So what? What's that got to do with lift or downforce? Well, here is the really tricky thing. The direction those vortices rotate show if the body as a whole is developing lift or downforce. So let's just look at the right hand vortex looking again from behind. If the vortex is rotating anti-clockwise, as it shows in that diagram, the body as a whole is developing lift. Conversely, if that vortex on the right is rotating clockwise, the body as a whole is developing downforce. So the direction of vortex rotation shows the aerodynamic behavior of the body as a whole if the body flows are dominated by two vortices. Okay, If, if uh, there are all sorts of other appendages sticking out and there's all sorts of other turbulence of vortices going on, then this will not apply. But where you've got these two basic shapes, especially the fastback shape, the direction of vortex flow will show whether the car as a whole is developing lift or downforce. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. So how do you measure it? Well, what I've done is I've developed a paddle system, a rotating paddle system. Now, I was coming up with a system like this, and then uh, Dr. Jeff Howe, uh, who is one of the people who uh, viewed my book and gave feedback on it, uh, pointed out that uh, Mirror, the UK research organisation in the 50s, were trialling paddles to measure rotating vortices behind cars. And he was kind enough to uh, forward a technical report to me. And so I could modify the approach that I was going to take. And, and this is the result. So we've got a longitudinal axis here. I'll show you in more detail in a moment. And we've got these paddles, which are just flat plastic paddles attached to arms. And the whole paddle, if it's influenced by a rotating vortex, will rotate in that vortex. You understand the air is flowing around along a, a longitudinal axis. It'll rotate the paddles as well. Can't use a propeller or a fan. It has to be something that responds only to a rotating airflow. 
So I, I made that device, which I'll show in close up in a moment, but actually attaching it to the car proved to be much more difficult. I ended up making this system using uh, high powered suction caps and RAM adjustable bull mounts. And so it could be held rigidly in position behind different cars uh, and, and be able to be moved around until I found where the actual vortex location was. So here's a close up of it. It uses a bicycle hub as the bearing, good quality bearing of course in bicycle hubs are very cheap. It uses uh, aluminium uh, strip uh, which has been uh, bent through 90 degrees to mount the paddles and uh, what you may just be able to see is here is an electronic sensor which is a tachometer sensor. It measures the speed of rotation of the paddle. Now I, I built that system and then I realized often you can actually see the paddles in the rear vision mirror. So you can actually see how fast they're rotating in the direction of rotation. And so if I were making it from scratch, I wouldn't necessarily include the electronic tachometer, but they're available cheaply on eBay. They're sold as a machinery tachometer for use on a lathe or a drill press or something like that. So they're actually quite cheap. The sensor is triggered by magnets, which you can see here I've taped to the arms and as the magnet comes past the sensor it, it closes a Hall effect switch. We have a little tachometer module which measures the number of impulses coming through and then displays a speed which I, I can have inside the car. Here you can see one of the RAM bull joint mounts, double bull joint mounts, uh, which allows me to change its orientation and so on. So we have this thing mounted with a longitudinal axis long ways behind the car and we move it around and we can see the direction of rotation of the vortex and by looking at the tachometer or just visually looking at it in the mirror we can see the speed of rotation and you might say well what does the speed matter? Well think of something like a tropical cyclone, a hurricane called in some countries. The greater the pressure gradient across the vortex, which is this huge storm, the faster the rotation of the storm. And so the more intense the vortex behind the car, the faster the rotation of the paddles. It's a bit like tufting. It brings something completely invisible and makes it visible. It's, it's quite amazing. So here is a really really good example i this was just one of the most exciting days of testing i have ever done in aerodynamics so we can see we've got the trailing vortex paddle system mounted behind uh, the porsche cayman and the porsche cayman has got a rear spoiler which can be lifted by a button on the center console normally it rises at 120 kilometers an hour automatically but it speeds less than that you can make it rise or make it stay recessed so I put the vortex measuring paddles on the back. When I drove along with the spoiler down, the airflow was anti-clockwise. That uh, paddle was rotating anti-clockwise, which as I said a moment ago is indicative of lift. The car develops lift with the spoiler down. I then came to a halt, put the spoiler up, drove it again, and the paddle direction was different. It was now rotating clockwise, showing that the car was now developing downforce. I thought, wow, that's pretty exciting. And then I thought, what happens if you drive along at a constant 100 kilometers an hour with the spoiler down, press the button, and so the spoiler comes back up. And so I did it. And so I was watching in the mirror, the spoiler was down, the paddle was rotating anti-clockwise, lift, the one on the right, remember, looking at it from the back. And then I pressed the button, and as the spoiler came up, I watched in the rear vision mirror and the paddle came to a halt, slowed to a halt, and then started rotating the other way. So, so it was the most fantastic example of the rotating paddle showing that the car had moved from developing lift to developing downforce as that rear spoiler height was changed. It's really quite exciting. Now remember though that if you look at the shape of the uh, Cayman it's very much a fastback shape so it's going to have if, if I show it developing lift it's going to have airflow wrapping around that way okay um, there's, there's the shape of the car in, in cross section as well as longitudinal shape allows that airflow to wrap around quite easily uh, whereas with the, as I said with the spoiler up uh, it changes direction. So very, very exciting to watch it actually occur. I was chuckling out loud with glee just watching this change. 
So measuring trailing vortices with a rotating paddle versus using suspension ride height sensors or using a laser ride height sensor, the rotating paddle will work only on fastback and modern notchback shapes. The more it looks like a fastback, the stronger the trailing vortices typically, and therefore the better this approach will work. The direction of rotation shows the dominant trailing vortex flow. As I say, there will be other vortices occurring, um, therefore thus showing whether the body is developing lift or downforce. You've got to be a little bit careful. Um, it, it, the actual vortices and what's going on is more complex than I've shown in the diagrams and the paddle isn't going to see a lot of the subtle subtleties like vortices within vortices, but it will show the dominant vortex flow and that's really what we want to see. As we saw on the Porsche, it can show the change from lift to downforce with the movement of an active aero device. Um, I've tried it only on, on this car uh, in terms of showing that, but it may well also be able to show different wing inclinations and things of that sort. And I said the speed of rotation shows vortex strength. And that's got implications that extend way beyond this video just on lift and downforce because the less intense we can make those trailing vortices, typically the lower the aerodynamic drag. So these uh, paddles have got uh, um, a strong uh, uh, use in terms of actually trying to reduce trailing vortex strength and so reduce drag. The book's called Vehicle Aerodynamics Testing, Modification and Development. It's available in Amazon from your country. It's a big book. It's 500 pages, 800 images, all in full color. So it's not a cheap book. Can't be with uh, that mix of attributes. But I think you'll find, as demonstrated in this video, you'll find content you'll see nowhere else. And it's all practical, hands-on content that I've actually done and proved. It's been uh, reviewed. The book has been reviewed by uh, some very senior and eminent uh, motor vehicle aerodynamicists. And their feedback and contributions and ideas have been included in the book. So there's a, a real feast for people who are interested in automotive aerodynamics. Thank you.